and what are the steps involved you know, during the SEO process. Um, these are the main steps that are involved. Number one, like I said, keyword research. Right? Know what your prospects are looking for. Compare the long tail keywords versus the short tail keywords. And then list the potential keywords that you can optimize for. List all the keywords that you want to rank for. Right? And then do a competitor research. Right? Know what your competitors are ranking for. Know what, what your competitors coming up for different, different search terms that you identified in step one. And then pick the right keywords. Yeah, you tool that with the Google Keyword Tools. You can type in, once you have a list of keywords, for example, Accountants Brunswick, right? You just type in there and see which of your competitors on the first page, right? And if you don't see anyone, then there's less competition and you can straight away go and work on that. And if there's already like 10 of your competitors ranking for that keyword, then probably it's going to be very tough to rank for that keyword. It's going to take you a lot of time. So, you know, pick keywords that have relatively less competition. If there is no competition, that means then it's not actually converting. People are not using that keyword. So there has to be a good competition, but not very high competition. So and once you do competitive research, know about your website. Like I said, implement Google Analytics and Google Webmaster. How many of you have installed these tools for your website, Webmaster and Analytics? Uh, so Analytics just tells you, you know, the traffic and things for your website. Webmaster actually tells you the overall health of your website. What are the backlinks that you're getting for your website? Who are the different people that are referring your website? So Webmaster, um, it, it's more of a health check thing. How is there any broken links in your website? So Webmaster is more important than having analytics, actually. Google Webmaster. Yeah, Google Webmaster tool. You can just Google Google Webmaster tool. And again, these tools are free to use. And it's very easy to implement as well. You can see instructions on how to implement. Google Webmaster tool, and the other one is Google Analytics. It's free, it's very, very good. But you know, Google Analytics is focused on AdWords. So if you look at the competition, if you look at the volume, they are focused more on the Google AdWords side of things. So you have a lot of other SEO tools that you can use. So once you finalize the keywords, you know, set your campaign target. Know what kind of rank rankings you want to achieve for your keywords. What's the traffic that you want to achieve from your keywords? And what kind of conversion you want to get? So set up monthly targets for your, for your SEO campaign. And then once you know the keywords, write keyword-focused content for your website. Make sure you have the keywords included in all the content of your website. And once you do that, ensure you have call to action, a clear and, call, you know, clear and simple call to action that stands out. And you know, make sure you optimize the conversion of your website as well. Once you get all the basics ready, then you can start doing all the on-page and off-page stuff that we discussed. And then use analytics to track your results. And then you know, analyze your results, and you can continuously improve your keywords and your ranking. So that's the steps involved in a successful SEO. And these are basically things you must know before doing an SEO. Um, SEO is an ongoing effect, ongoing uh, effort. So you have to keep doing it, right? If you rank for a keyword, and then if you stop doing your off-page SEO, then probably you might come down in a couple of months' time. Because there are so many people trying to rank for that keyword, and they would be continuously doing their SEO. So it's, it's, it's not a one-time thing, it's an ongoing thing. And then search engines change their algorithms constantly. You know, Google have hundreds of factors they look at for ranking a website. And today you might rank number one for a particular keyword, but the next month the ranking might go down because they have just changed the algorithm. Right? And the third one is the unethical SEO strategy, which is the black hat SEO. That's why we discussed one of the examples where you have a white background and then put some white text and cheat the search engine. So any attempt you do to cheat or you know, override the search engine guidelines, and if the search engine finds it, you'll be you know, blacklisted. Your website will not come up in search results. So you need to be very careful that your SEO guy is not doing any of those black hat techniques. A bit more about black hat SEO. <laughs> so number, basically, it's about you know, all these search engines have a set of guidelines. Right? You need to make sure you just abide by those guidelines. You don't override those guidelines. A few examples is keyword stuffing. Right? Instead of writing meaningful content, people would just put Accountants Brunswick, we are Accountants Brunswick in Brunswick, right? So you should, should try and write meaningful content instead of just stuffing the keywords in your page. So if you, do, if you just stuff your keyword, that's a black hat technique. Hidden text, that's the example that we dis discussed now. And blog comment spam. So instead of going and commenting some meaningful comments on blogs, people just go and put their link on different blogs. They just go to a blog, here's my website. Here's the link to my website. And that would have no relevance to the blog that they are posting the link to. So you have to be 
meaningful you know, in, in terms of the, the links that you create. If you just go and create links in some random websites, in some random context, then that's again a black hat SEO technique. Okay, everyone. Um, look, just on behalf of the group, I'd just like to thank Brett for his presentation today. Thank you, Anthony, for all the um, Based on the range of questions and the discussion it generated, we probably could have run this as a day workshop. But um, <laughs> look, the intention was just to give people a quick overview.